Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part two of Terror of the Lord. And uh, his subtitle could be um, Enemies of God, or the Enemies of the Lord. Now, people will try to confuse the issue, well, devils and those that have no discernment will try to confuse the issue. And they will tell you, oh, well, God said to love, love your enemies. Jesus said to love your enemies. Right. We are to love our personal enemies enemies we are not to love the lord's enemies big difference you want to love a uh, satan and satanists well go for it big dog i don't care i really i don't i i'm not going to try to persuade you if you want to if you want to love satanists go for it see if i care but there's a big difference between our enemies and the enemies of the Lord. Big, big difference. So, with that in mind. Also, they'll also uh, try to confuse things like with repentance. Okay? Jesus told us that we had to repent. And then they'll say, well, that just means to change your mind. Well, and then they'll say it doesn't mean turning from sin because God repented. See, they want you to think that you're repenting and God repenting that you're on the same level as God. No, God is without sin. We are not. Absolutely, we are not. And God does want us to change our mind about sin turning away from wickedness and evil. God doesn't have any wickedness or evil that he needs to turn from. But in when Jonah went to Nineveh and they repented of their evil, wicked ways in sackcloth and in ashes, God repented that from turning uh, the city into ashes and dust. He was going to destroy Nineveh, but he said, okay, I won't do it. Big difference. You know, just because it's the same word doesn't mean uh, you're the same as God the Father. No, I don't think so. But we have personal enemies and God has enemies. Oh, yeah. Let's take a look. Now, let's go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And there was, past tense, and there was war in heaven. W-A-R. War in heaven. Wow. You know, when you have an enemy... Uh, don't you go to war? You know, like countries are uh, enemies of each other and they go to war, right? Well, instead of countries, you got a war in heaven. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels. Hmm. Hmm. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. They were kicked out. They were booted out. Verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into, into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. War in heaven. God has enemies. You know, 
when you when there's a war, uh, you know, aren't you trying to kill somebody when you're in a war? And deceived fools or Satanists, deceivers, wolves in sheep's clothing will say, but but Jesus said we're supposed to love our enemies. Well, you can love God's enemies all you want. Personally, I don't care. I, really, I don't. I don't care. But here's the deal. Uh, <laughs> you know, in Genesis 6, I got an entire playlist on Genesis 6 and what the heck happened there. But if you re bother to read Genesis 6, uh, where the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they had giants, and then God destroyed the whole world in a flood. Yeah. And there are actually people that want you to believe that the sons of God were godly men, probably of the line of Seth, and the daughters of men, well, they're the, they're the females from Cain. And they want you to think that these godly men married these ungodly women, how come all the men are godly and all the women are wicked, ungodly? How does that work? Well, don't ask too many questions because they won't answer you because they can't. But they want you to think godly men married these ungodly women. And then they had giants for children. And then the Lord says, oh, I'm sick of this. Uh, I'm going to flood the whole earth and kill everybody except for no one. You know, the eight people on the ark. Well, Noah and Noah with the other seven, but eight total on the ark. Yeah. So did you know that uh, believing men marry un unbelieving women uh, has giants for children? And then God kills them all? Really? That's what they want you to believe. Well, instead of being five foot nine or six foot uh, you know, they were probably six foot six, those giants, you know. Well, when you read about the book of Joshua, where the Israelites went into the land and saw the giants, and they said, we are like grasshoppers in their eyes. I know that's a figure of speech, but I mean, Goliath, what was Goliath? Now, there were giants in the land before the flood and after the flood. And if you read, bother to read Job 38, and I got a study on it. The sons of God shouted for joy at the foundation or the creation of the earth. Well, Adam didn't come until six days after the earth was created. There's no way the sons of God can, of, of the Old Testament could be men because they didn't exist. Adam was formed out of the dust of the earth. You can't have Adam as a son of God shouting for joy before he was created. And yes, I know, Adam is called a son of God in, I think it's the third chapter of Luke, when you trace back the genealogy of Christ. But New Testament believers are not called sons of God until after they are saved and indwelt with the Holy Spirit. So, let's take a look at, well, something you should know. God told Israel to go into the land and kill all the Canaanites. Yeah. Now, the only reason uh, preachers can get away with this silly nonsense, satanic nonsense about, uh, you know, uh, what happened in Genesis 6 with the flood and giants is uh, because people are lazy and they won't bother to read the Bible. But they can tell you uh, the stats of their favorite football quarterback or running back or baseball or you know whatever it's sad but uh, I have no sympathy for him so 
Canaanites. Was David killing Goliath a joke? In 1 Chronicles 20 and verse 4, And it came to pass after this that there arose war, W-A-R, war at Gezer with the Philistines. At which time Sibichai the Hushethite slew Sippai, that was of the children of the giant, and they were subdued. 2 Samuel 21, 18, And it came to pass after this that there was again a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sibichai the Hushanite slew Saf, which was of the sons of the giant. Ah. Now remember, Israel was told to go into the land, to Canaan, the Canaanite land, of which the Philistines were one of the tribes of the Canaanites. And they were told to go into the land and kill everything that breathed. And churches will say, well, you know, that was that, that Old Testament, cruel, cruel Old Testament God. But now we got Jesus, the new and improved New Testament God that loves everybody. I don't think so. But, hey, who listens to Bob anyways, you know. 1 Chronicles 20 and verse 6. And yet again there was war at Gath, where was a man of great stature. Yeah, he was three inches over six foot, so he was of great stature. That's what they'll tell you. Now, these guys were nine, twelve foot tall, whose fingers and toes were four and twenty. Huh, six fingers and six toes. Do you know who else has got six fingers and six toes on them? There's people in India. There's people, uh, American Indias, Indians. Um, movie stars. Marilyn Monroe had six toes, I heard. Oprah Winfrey, six toes. Halle Berry, six toes. Hmm... And not all the Canaanites were giants. And yet again, there was war at Gath, where there was a man of great stature, whose fingers and toes were four and twenty, six on each hand and six on each foot. And he also was the son of the giant. So God wanted war with the children of the wicked women who did not believe? Really? That's what uh, modern preachers would have you believe today about Genesis 6? So where are these giants today? How about Deuteronomy chapter 7, which is definitely not politically correct, by the way. Old Testament. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whither thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Utterly destroy them. But, 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 but God, that's cruel, God. Why, you should send preachers to them and, and teach them about the love of Jesus. I don't think so. Thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. You know why? Because they were satanic hybrids. They were not of God's making. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. Don't marry him. And if you want another confirmation, read Ezra chapter 9. The children of Israel intermarried with these human hybrid devils. God said, divorce. Divorce them. Take the children born of this wicked unions, hand them to the satanic parent and cast them out. 
When's the last time you ever heard Ezra chapter 9 preached in a church? A demon nominational church. You don't. You don't hear that stuff. You know. So. How about the wheat and the tares? The parable of the wheat and the tares. Matthew 13, 38. Jesus explained the parable of the wheat and the tares. What are tares? They're weeds. There's weeds in the garden. Jesus said the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the weeds. The tares are the children of the wicked one. The tares are the children of the wicked one. Who is the wicked one? Adam or Satan? Think about it. In 1 John 3, 12, we read, Not as Cain, who was of, not like, not followed, not took after, of, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Now, if Cain was a son of Adam, that makes Adam the wicked one, doesn't it? Hmm. Something to ask your demon nominational preacher. Why is Cain never listed in the generations of Adam? Why? Why is that? Jesus speaking to guess who? In John chapter 8, verse 44, he told a certain group of religious people, not all of them, but the ones that were hanging around that he's talking to at the time, he said, ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do, because he was a murderer from the beginning. Uh, who was the murderer from the beginning? Uh, oh, I don't know, Chaplain Bob. I've never read the Old Testament. I'm a New Testament Christian, and I'm proud of it. I'll tell you what. Next time you want to go read a novel, don't bother reading the first three quarters of it. Just read the end. Just read the last chapter, and, you know, I think you're going to understand the book perfectly. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Who is the first recorded liar in the Bible? Uh, the serpent. Revelation 12 tells you who the serpent was. The devil and Satan. Doesn't he? When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, I tell you the truth. Jesus says he's telling them the truth. Not a figure of speech. He's not calling them names. He's telling them the truth. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. He's not calling them names. He's not giving them a figure of speech. He's telling them the truth. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. And if you want to know who Jesus is talking to, read verse 48. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to read that because, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> you get uh, you getting the idea? Yeah. I hope you get the idea. Now, if you want to, you can read Genesis chapter 14. Uh, 
his lot, his his nephew, Lot, you know, Lot lived in Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, Lot was uh, taken slave, captive, by, I'm not exactly sure who, but it was one of the Canaanites. So Abraham uh, grabbed his armed, trained servants and went after them and slaughtered those that had uh, taken Lot captive. And, uh, and then in verse 18, now, uh, oh, by the way, I did a Bible study on Melchizedek, king of Salem. I did a Bible study on the wheat and the tares, a series, actually. If you're interested, look at my playlists. So, yeah, I've done a lot of Bible studies over the years. Genesis 14, verse 18, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, Salem, that's where you get the word, well, the, the you know who say shalom, it means peace, but uh, yeah, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, and by the way, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, city of peace, believe it or not. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. Huh. What did uh, Jesus, when he did the uh, Lord's Supper, what did he bring forth? Bread and wine. Drink the, this wine. It's the blood of the covenant, right? Take this bread. It's uh, my body. And he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him. He blessed Abraham. And said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies. Whoa. But, but Jesus said, We're supposed to love our enemies. Yeah, well, you can love Satan and his followers all you want. I'm going to pass on that. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. So, yeah. You get the idea? Now, compare that to Exodus 23, 4. Let's say you got a, uh, a neighbor that doesn't like you because uh, you put up a fence or, you know, whatever, a thousand reasons. Exodus 23, 4, if thou meet thine enemy, that's a your enemy. There's a big difference between your enemy and God's enemies. Big difference. If thou meet thine enemy's ox or his ass going astray, Thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. You know, you see their their ox or their ass, uh, donkey. You know, got you know jumped the fence or broke down the fence, and they're wandering down the road. You know, put a rope around its neck, bring it back. Hey, uh, neighbor, your uh, your ox got out. Here it is. You might want to fix that fence, so. Oh, yeah. And then in verse 22, we read, Exodus 23, 22, But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, now this is the Lord speaking, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. So you got to realize God's enemies are my enemies. Satanists are my enemy and they are, I am their enemy. They know this. Believe me, they know this. You know what is sad is when the devil's people knows the Bible better than churchgoers. And I call them churchgoers because I shudder to call them Christians. 
I shudder. In Leviticus 26, verse 25, God gives a warning that if you do not uh, obey him, he says, and I will bring a sword upon you, war, that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when ye are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence, disease, among you, and ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. Hmm. Numbers 10, 9. And if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. Do you remember those old westerns uh, about how the Cavalry would blow the trumpet. You know, when Amer the army doesn't blow trumpets hardly anymore that I know of. Uh, for those of you that are in the service, they had uh, reveille in the morning, you know, and uh, taps at night and at funerals, uh, if I remember correctly. But it used to be the cavalry, the the during like the time before the Civil War and what have you, they used to blow the trumpet. And they almost always won their battles. Uh, battle of Little Bighorn notwithstanding, but... You know, so the enemy doesn't want us having our army blow the trumpet and having the Lord remember and giving us victory over the enemy. Hmm. And if you still don't believe in satanic hybrids, Deuteronomy 33, 27, the eternal God is our, uh, is thy refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms and he shall thrust out the enemy, the enemy from before thee and shall say, destroy them. Oh, but now Jesus wants us to love them. Wow. Hmm. Now remember, the Philistines were, uh, some of the Philistines at least were giants, right? That's what Goliath was. He was a Philistine. Uh, Judges 16, 23 and 24. They captured Samson, put out his eyes, cut his hair. Remember the story? Then the lords of the Philistines gathered themselves together for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon, their god. Uh, who's Dagon, Chaplain Bob? Hey, that's a good question. I am so glad you answered that question. Dagon. You know what Dagon? He was the uh, fish god. Huh? Fish God? What are you talking about? Well, from the waist up, he was a man. And from the waist down, he was a fish. Uh, you ever see Disney's Little Little Mermaid movie? Cartoon? Yeah, that's exactly what Dagon looked like. Except for, I don't think he was wearing a, a bikini top. Uh, what was it? Poseidon? Neptune? Yeah, you know, I don't... One of them's Greek, the other one's Roman. Neptune and Poseidon. Uh, I'm not sure which one is which. But, uh, yeah, the God of the sea. Then the Lord of the Philistines gathered together for to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon their God and to rejoice. For they said, for they said, Our God hath delivered Samson, our enemy... Our God hath delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their God, for they said, Our God hath delivered into our hands our enemy and the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. Wow. 
in the book of Kings, first chap, uh, first, first Kings, chapter eight, verse thirty-three. You read, "When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, because they've sinned against the Lord, and shall turn again to thee." See, the people turned away from the Lord, but they were struck down before the enemy and shall turn again to thee and confess thy name and pray and make supplication unto thee in this house, the temple. Then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy people Israel and bring them again into the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain, People, when there's a drought, it's a wake-up call from the Lord because there's wickedness in the land. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee, if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin, turn from their sin when thou afflictest them. See, no rain is affliction from the Lord. Verse 36, then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel, that thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk and give rain unto thy land, which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance. Uh, you don't need it to do the Indian rain dance. When you want rain, there you go. Verse 37. If there be in the land famine, what happens when there's no rain, drought? There's going to be famine. If there be pestilence, disease, blasting, mildew, locust, or if there be caterpillar, if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities, their enemy, God's enemies, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by all thy people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart and spread forth his, his hands toward this house, then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and forgive. We're asking God to forgive and do and give to every man according to his, to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. For thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men, that they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Yep, absolutely. Here's an interesting verse. Psalm 74, verse 10. O oh God, how long shall the adversary reproach Shall the enemy blaspheme thy name forever? Uh, in Revelation, God, when God was sending his plagues upon the earth, uh, people blasphemed the name of the Lord. Oh, yeah. Now, here's the difference between the Lord's enemies and our enemies. In Proverbs 25, 21. If thine enemy, your enemy, my enemy, if thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. Yeah. Didn't Jesus say basically the same thing? Yeah. So, you know, there's a big difference between our enemies and the Lord's enemies. When you read the book of Jeremiah and Lamentations, uh, Israel and Judah, well, especially Judah, Judah, whose capital was at Jerusalem, had become so evil that the Lord sold them into the hands of Babylon. And when you read Lamentations 2 and verse 5, we read, The Lord was as an enemy. The Lord became their enemy. 
He hath swallowed up Israel. He hath swallowed up all her palaces. He hath destroyed his strongholds and hath increased in the daughter of Judah mourning and lamentation. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you can read Lamentations chapter 2 if you want. But, you know, when the Lord becomes your enemy, you got a problem. Big problem. And that's what basically Europe and America have become today. Everything the Lord says to do, we don't. And everything the Lord says not to do, we do with pride. Oh, yeah. Generally as a nation and as a people. In James, book of James, uh, chapter 4, verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, uh, physical or spiritual? Maybe both. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? What is enmity? Enmity. It's uh, extreme hatred. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You love this world? I sure don't. I hate this world. Now, in Genesis chapter 22, verse 15, and the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. Huh? This angel of the Lord swore by himself, saith the Lord? Now, I did a Bible study on the angel of the Lord. Why is you're not surprised? Um, I believe this was Jesus in his pre-human form. Because this angel of the Lord said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. So this is no mere angel. And said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. Now, Abraham was getting ready to uh, sacrifice Isaac. Uh, verse 17. That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed, children, as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed, thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Do the you-know-whos who claim to be Abraham's children, are they as numerous as the stars in heaven and the sand which is upon the seashore? Is 12 million you-know-whos, do they fulfill this prophecy? And if you say no, then you have to wonder. you got a question to ask yourself. Are they not who they say they are? Or is God a liar? And I'll let you answer that for yourself. So. God's people would possess the gates of his enemies. In Genesis chapter 49, verse 8. Now remember, there were 12 sons of Jacob Israel. Jacob's name was changed to Israel, rules with God, prince of God. Levi was the priest tribe, and Judah was to be the tribe of the kings. So, in Genesis 49, verse 8, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Judah's hand is going to be on the throat of the enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Hmm. 
Do you know the Germans of it it took the entire world to defeat Germany in World War One and World War Two? Germany defeated, well, the Germans, the people, defeated the Roman Empire. They were never completely conquered by them. Uh, for, uh, oh, I can't remember the name of that thing where they wiped out an entire Roman legion. Yeah. Should read that. I think it was Teutonberg Forest. I don't, I don't remember. But, uh. Do you know that almost all the royalty of Europe were of Germanic extraction? Yeah. The King of England. They were Germans. I mean, I don't care where you went. They were, all the royalty of Europe were Germans, almost all of them. What did Germany give us? The printing press. What did they print? The Bible. That was the first book printed on the printing press. Granted, it was the, uh, you know, the Gutenberg Bible. And by the way, Guten, Gut in German means good, and Berg means mountain. So his name was Good Mountain. In the book of Daniel, doesn't it talk about a, a, a mountain? coming down and destroying the uh, image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up and creating a kingdom of which there would be no end? Christ is that mountain. So, Judah's going to be the king tribe. Verse 9, Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He crouched as a lion and as an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? You ever heard of the lion of the tribe of Judah? Christ. There you go. Bingo. In Deuteronomy 20, verse 1, the Lord says, When thou goest out, to battle against thine enemies and seized horses and chariots and a people more than thou be not afraid of them for the Lord thy God is with thee which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt don't be afraid of them the Lord's going to fight for you do you know that the Lord rained down Hailstones that weighed like 70 pounds upon the head of the enemy. One time, Israel was worried that they were going to get defeated because there were so many of them. Wow. Deuteronomy 25, 19. Therefore it shall be when the Lord thy God hath given thee rest from all thine enemies, round about, in the land which the Lord thy God hath, uh, giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance, blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven, thou shalt not forget it. Who's Amalek? Amalek was a grandson of Esau, who was Edom. Wow. Wow, did you know that God said he hated Esau? Look up Malachi chapter 1. God hated Esau. Why? Because he married the satanic hybrids, the Hittites, not once, but twice. Uh, two wives from Hittites. Double your pleasure, double your fun, or is it double trouble? Yeah. In... Exodus 17, 16. For he said, Because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war, war with Amalek, from generation to generation. Guess what, people? Josephus, a Jewish historian, living in the time of Rome and Christ, said that King Herod was of Edom. 
Yeah. I wonder if he was of Amalek. You know, King Herod, the guy that killed all the babies in Bethlehem trying to kill Christ? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, modern church world will say, well, you know, now Jesus loves them. He just wants them to, you know, believe in Jesus and he's going to be saved. I don't think so. In Deuteronomy 33, 7, And this is the blessing of Judah. And he said, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah, and bring him unto his people. Let his hands be sufficient for him, and be thou an help to him from his enemies. Hmm. Wow. In 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, verse 29, And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries, you know, the land of Canaan, when they had heard that the Lord fought, the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. Wow. Hey, what about the 23rd Psalm, verse 5? You know, Psalms 23, you know, <laughs> what a wonderful uh, chapter. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. 23rd Psalms, what a beautiful chapter in the Bible. Psalms 37, 20. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke, shall they consume away. Wow. In the book of Psalms, chapter 139, King David says, verse 20, for they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Verse 21. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? King David hated those that hated the Lord. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them, with perfect hatred, I count them mine enemies. But but David, was he not a man after God's own heart? But they'll tell you, oh, you're supposed to love those enemies, Lord, oh, King David. No. King David hated the Lord's enemies. God said that King David was a man after his own heart. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to the New Testament. Matthew 5, 44. Jesus said, But I say unto you, love your enemies. Love your enemies. Don't love the Lord's enemies. You not, No, 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 no. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Oh, yeah. Big difference. All right, let's go to Luke chapter 1. Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, verse 57. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord hath showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John, John the Baptist, right? And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father how he would have called him. And he asked for a writing table, table and wrote saying his name is John and they marveled all 
Now remember, uh, he questioned the angel in the temple and the angel smote him so he couldn't speak. Uh, 64. And his mouth was opened immediately and his tongue loosed and he spake and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them. And all these things were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation, a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Verse 71, listen to this carefully that we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him, the Lord, without fear. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. Wow. Let's take a look at something else. Luke chapter 19. Hmm. Words of Christ in red. Luke 19. In verse 12, Jesus said, He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Who's this nobleman? Christ. What is the kingdom? The kingdom on earth. But he's going to have to return to heaven. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. Reign, R-E-I-G-N, ruling, ruling, not water falling from the sky. No, we will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he returned, having received the kingdom, that he commanded those servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, thou ha have thou authority over ten cities. Uh, people, there's going to be ranks in heaven. Oh, yeah. You know, not everybody's going to be the same. One guy's going to be ruling over ten cities. Another's going to rule over five. Another's going to rule over one. Others are going to be, well... That'll be for the Lord to decide, so. 18. And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said likewise to him, Be thou also over five cities. And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art an austere man. 
Uh, that's a hard man. Thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. So, he's basically saying here that you're taking other people's work. He's reaping what the Lord didn't sow. I mean, that's like, wow, Lord, I did all the work, but you're going to benefit from it. Verse 22. And he, the king, uh, the king, said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest I was an austere man. Oh, I'm a hard man, huh? That's what you, you say? Well, that's what you mean. That's what you get. Taking up that, I laid not down, and reaping what I did not sow. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required mine own with usury? See, usury was forbidden among God's people. You know, interest. The Lord here is saying, I would rather you do something that I forbid than to do nothing at all. I mean, I, that's how I see it. I could be wrong. And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound and give it to him that hath ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. For I say unto you that unto everyone which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that he hath shall be taken away from him. Listen to this carefully. This is Jesus speaking. Verse 27. But those mine enemies, but those mine enemies which would not that I should reign over them, those are those the, my enemies that are won't let me rule over them. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither, bring them here, and slay them before me. Bring them here and kill them. Mine enemies that won't allow me to rule over them, bring them here and kill them. That's the Bob translation. Yeah. Think about it, people. Wow. Wow. In Romans chapter 5.10, and there's people who will tell you that Paul's a false apostle. Uh, no, they're the false disciples. That's what they are. For if when we, when, uh, for if when we were enemies, see, we were, when we were lovers of this world, we were the enemies of God. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Yeah. By his life, death, burial, resurrection, we're going to be saved. Wow. Philippians 3.18 For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of of the cross of Christ. When you see people that hate the cross, they're enemies of the cross of Christ. Um, Jehovah's Witnesses are a perfect example. Yeah. They hate the cross of Christ. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> you get the idea there. There's another group of people that hate the cross, too. Uh, yeah. So, in closing, just remember, there's a big difference between our personal enemies and the enemies of the Lord and the enemies of the cross of the Christ. Big difference, people. Big difference. And they will be given to the terror of the Lord. The lake of fire shall be their ultimate destination. Oh, yeah. So, ah, it's such a mess.
This world is such a mess, so evil. All right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In the name of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, in his precious name, amen.